Hey everyone, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here today with another dyeing experiment. It's springtime, so that means we've got Easter egg dye pellets. I had so much fun dyeing a crocheted chain of roving that I want to try this again, but this time I want to space dye with these Easter egg dye pellets. The Easter egg pellets contain food coloring and citric acid but I will also be adding vinegar to the dye bath because I've found from previous experiments that you need additional acid to help the colors quickly bind to the yarn. And if you even look at the instructions on the Easter egg dye kits, you'll see that they tend to say to add vinegar for more vibrant colors. To make the crochet chain, I'm gonna start with a slip knot. And then loosely pull the fiber through. I might be twisting it a bit as I'm doing this, but I'm really just trying to create a braid. This is kind of like uh, tie dyeing almost, because since parts of the roving are more twisted and other parts are more accessible, we'll end up with some lighter and darker patches or even some that's undyed. The actual roving that I am using today is Full Circle Roving by Knit Picks. Um, and I like it because it's not quite a pure white. Um, I like that, you know, we'll get more of a heathered look out of it. I have added the roving to a shallow pot um, and you know, arrange it as so. There's no water in this dye bath yet. I'm now, oops, I'm now pouring in about eight cups of water or enough. We want to just barely submerge the roving. I added three tablespoons of white vinegar to the eight cups of water. Actually, I've only poured in maybe five cups so far as I'm starting to submerge this braid. But you can see that even though the braid has soaked up a ton of water, it is not yet covered. So I'm going to go ahead and add the entire eight cups. I could have gotten away with less water in here, but a nice round number. Alrighty, I'm now going to turn on the stove and since the wool is already in the dye bath I want to heat it fairly slowly um, because I don't want to get to a rolling boil as I don't want to risk felting my beautiful roving. But once we get back here to a simmer then we can add the tablets and have some fun. Okay, our pot is steaming. It is hot. There are barely no bubbles, which is pretty perfect. I'm going to keep a close watch on the heat, but we are ready to add some tablets. I'm going to add six tablets, three red and three yellow, and let's see how they combine. After five or six minutes, it looks like the color has mostly stopped um, spreading out. But you can see, maybe, maybe you can't from the angle, but there's still a lot of red dye in that center area that has not yet absorbed to the yarn. I'm also curious to see if something will come up on that white patch over there. But at this stage, we're just going to let things sit 
and then we'll come back in 10 minutes or so and see where we are. But for now, I am going to cover this up. All right, we're 10 minutes later. And ooh, the water is starting to clear. And look, we've gone from some yellow to some more orange. Yay! And look, we still have a little bit of white, but this white area over here is filling out. Um, I do think that we should let this sit for longer. Um, so I will come back in another 10 minutes. after um, another 10 minutes, so a total of 20, there has not been much change. Uh, so, or who knows, maybe there's more change. I'll have to check back the film. But the water seems mostly clear and I'm now gonna turn off the heat, let this cool, um, so then I can remove the braid from the dye bath and wash it. But I wanna let it cool completely because I don't want to risk felting the fibers by agitating them too much when they're hot. The water is cool enough to touch um, and I am ready to remove the braid. I'm still going to let it cool further before I wash it. Let's see. Ooh. So we got some decent mixing. And it looks like all the color is in the fiber. Oof. We've got some bright yellow, red, and some orange, but we'll know more once the fiber dies. I'll come back when it's time to wash. I've got some lukewarm water here, and in it there's just some some dish soap and I am going to wash this roving until the water runs clear. You can see from the first dip that almost no color is coming out in the wash water. And once, you know, once this is, I got all the soap out, I will gently, gently, gently um, squeeze out the water. I'll probably use a towel to roll it up and squeeze out the water gently then I will hang it up to dry. Here is our dry braid arranged approximately the way it was in the pot. And now I am going to unravel it. So when I undid the last loop, we can see that there are definitely some white segments. Oh, fun. And as I'm pulling it out, we've got patches of white red and orange so far as we go through but there is some really nice mixing of the colors okay i have not done a multi-color one of these braids yet and so i am pretty excited with how this has turned out. I may be more of a blue-purple person than a red and orange person, but I am really excited with how this turned out. I like that we not only see some changes in the depth of a single color, like we've got red here to pink, but that we also have mixing of the yellow and red into a bunch of different shades of orange. Also, there are some really small patches of color and some larger patches of color, and I just think that this will give a lot of depth to the fiber and that we'll see a lot of really interesting color transitions up close and some barber pulling, and I'm really feeling excited about spinning this. Um, thank you so much for watching this dyeing experiment. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I hope that you will have as much fun playing with these Easter egg dye tablets as I did.